Hello everybody, my name is Lily. I am so happy that you are here with me. In today's video, we are going to work with more corrugated cardboard, just like this. In a recent video, I told you how I had put together an Ikea dresser and I have tons of cardboard left over and I just couldn't get myself to throw it away. So I have been cutting it down to more manageable pieces just like this so that I can make tags. Well, right now I'm working on tags. I'll have a video link for you right here where I showed you how I made some really cute, junky, corrugated cardboard Christmas tags. So go and watch that because I think they turned out really cute. In today's video though, we are going to make a different kind of tag that you can use for so many different projects. And I'm gonna give you some ideas on how to do that. Let me grab them and show you how cute they look. These are the super cute corrugated cardboard tags that we are going to make today, and they are cute little snowmen. Look at them. We're actually going to work on these four right here, and here is another. Oh my gosh. I went through my stash of embellishments and decorated each one of them a little bit different, so you could take a look right there, and as soon as I flip the camera over, you'll have a close-up as to what all of these look like. It is just cardboard, and then on one of them, I actually painted the back, used just leftover paint. I didn't want any of the paint to go to waste. And so I just painted the back. They turned out so cute. So these can be used so many different ways, not only just for your junk journals, but also to attach to Christmas presents. You can also just use them as ornaments. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a preview as to how you can use some of them, but super, super cute. I hope you enjoy this. So grab yourself some corrugated cardboard, some fun holiday embellishments or whatever you have, and let's make some really cute tags. This is a close-up of the four prototype tags. The tags that I made before the ones that we are going to work on, um, after I made those other junky corrugated tags, I got the idea to also make snowman tags and so I kind of got to work with some basic supplies and they turned out so stinking cute but I'm going to walk you through and we're going to go through the entire process and we are going to build ourselves four little snowman tags. They are so cute. For these I used a velvet ribbon and then they all share the same black buttons. These are black buttons that I purchased at Dollar Tree. I did some punch out hearts and these actually have little orange carrot noses. I'm not going to add them to the new ones because these actually, to me, they look like little um, snowman chicks, <laughs> like little birdies. <laughs> Those little, my triangle or my carrot noses look more like beaks than they do carrots. And so I opted to leave them out in the four that we are going to make. They look cute either way. I, I love each and every one of them. Okay, so I have cut down some corrugated cardboard even to, to a more manageable size. And so that's what I've been doing with all of the cardboard. So now I am going to rough draw some circles in the shape of snowmen. And I'm going to do four of them on this strip of cardboard. And we're going to do some easy doodling or easy drawing. So two circles, one smaller than the other, one for the head and one for the body. This is the easiest snowman body that I could think of. And just reach for a pencil. I happen to have this white chalk pencil. And do one circle and then do another circle kind of overlapping. And this is going to be almost like a figure eight. You could also try doing that. But one small circle and then one larger circle. And now I'm going to cut these down a little bit more so it makes it easier to fussy cut. And then notice how the corrugation on this cardboard is running vertically. That's really important so that it doesn't flop over. This makes it for a sturdier tag. So now cutting down my eight little drawings to in a more manageable size. I know I keep saying that, but believe me, it really does make a difference if you cut them down. And so I'm using a really good sturdy pair of scissors. These are by Tim Holtz and the large ones, they cut so easy. And these smaller ones, they're meant to cut through cardboard and chipboard and heavier types of cardstock. 
So if you have these, these are fantastic or any other heavy duty type of scissor. And now I'm just going to roughly cut around my pencil drawing. We are not aiming for perfection. These are grungy, handmade, um, rustic, primitive looking snowmen. And no matter how wonky they turn out, at the end, they are going to look so stinking cute. I do have an Amazon storefront and I will link some of the items that and tools that I'm using throughout this process in the description area below, including these scissors. They are fantastic, but again, use whatever scissor you like. These just happen to be some of my favorite ones. And so now that I've cut the first one, if you turn it over on the opposite side, you kind of get a better idea of the shape. And so you can go in and actually clean up those round edges. I'm going to just briefly show you how I'm zipping through this to get them cut. I didn't think you wanted to watch me fussy cut eight little snowmen, but you get the idea. And so now I've cleaned them up and they're looking pretty good. And now the next step, we are going to take the top layer of the corrugated cardboard. We're just going to peel it back to expose that corrugation. And you don't have to take or remove every little bit of paper, that top layer. You can leave some of it on the cardboard and that makes it look even more rustic and it'll, it'll actually absorb some of the paint even better. So do as much or as little of the peel back as you want. And I have to remember not to use my fingernails as tools because, you know, then they'll break. <laughs> so grab yourself a little pokey stick or some, um, some little tweezers to help lift that top layer and pull it back. That one was nice because it pulled back so easy. I'm now going to take some white paint. This is folk art white chalk paint. It is my favorite kind of paint. But if you have any kind of white paint, you can use it, including white gesso. So go through your stash and just get yourself some basic white paint or gesso. And now I am going to dry brush and I'm using an inexpensive paint brush to just kind of haphazardly paint over the corrugation. I'm not looking to completely saturate the snowman in white paint because I want some of that cardboard to show through. I want it to be clearly visible that this used to be a junky piece of corrugated cardboard. I just absolutely love trash to treasure projects and I try to repurpose everything. I see potential in everything and so I try to make something out of it. I had a little bit of leftover paint. We are not going to let that go to waste like I mentioned earlier. So I am just spreading the leftover paint on the back of one of the snowmen. I actually really like the way this turned out. And in hindsight, I should have done it to all four. But moving forward, I will be doing that, including to those other tags that I made in a previous video. So now I'm going to quickly air dry it. And now I'm gonna give it a layer of Mod Podge. This is a 64 fluid ounce container of Mod Podge that I have had for five years. I've put it in a smaller container just because it's easier to use because we are going to use some glitter. I know some of you have a love-hate relationship with glitter. I absolutely love glitter. All the sparkle, all the glitter, all the twinkle, give it to me, I absolutely love it. So I am going to do one layer of this Mod Podge glue over the painted snowman. And I'm using another very inexpensive paintbrush and giving it a quick layer of the glue. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can actually use white glue. You can even water it down just a tiny bit. You don't wanna get the cardboard too wet and give it a thin coating of white glue or Mod Podge or matte medium. Again, let's go through the supplies that we have and use them up. So now I'm going to sprinkle some of this clear, chunky glitter. I picked this up at the craft store in the clearance section and it was a great deal. I think I paid just a little bit over a dollar. And so now I'm sprinkling over the glue. 
I'm going to do that to all four of them and then set them aside. I'm going to shake off the excess and I have this green tray that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. It's actually a little lunch tray for, um, for children, I believe, but I thought it would be perfect for me to use in my craft room. And of course, that neon green, that chartreuse color is my favorite. <laughs> so why not? giving it another quick dry with my heat tool. And now I am going to give it a top coat of the Mod Podge. And this will seal the glitter. And I think that's why a lot of a lot of you may not like glitter because it just you'll have glitter, you know, everywhere the rest of your life. I don't mind the glitter, so I don't care if I have glitter all over me. <laughs> but if you don't want the glitter, add a top layer of the Mod Podge and that will actually seal in this glitter and it makes it kind of chunky, looks like snow. It makes it even more dimensional. And so it is optional, but I really like the way it kind of keeps that glue, the glitter in place. Giving it a quick dry with my heat tool. And when I say quick, I mean quick because the glue dries fairly quick. I've already prepared all of my embellishments. I have this cute, cute snowman Christmas winter dish that I picked up at an antique mall recently. I placed all of the embellishments that I plan to use to decorate the little snowman. I have flat back pearls, some flare buttons, Dollar Tree black buttons, also some little gems that I've had from close to my heart for a long time, and then some punch out hearts. I'm going to decorate each one a little bit different. Notice how in the first four that I worked on, they're pretty much the same. But as I started going through my embellishments, I had so many options. This is my favorite glue. It's called the Ultimate Glue. It is non-toxic. It is water-based. And it is perfect for metals, for plastic, for glass, and so much more. And it doesn't smell. You know, it just, it does not stink up your room like other glues do. And I absolutely love it, especially for heavy embellishments. It is absolutely perfect. These flare buttons already have a sticky back, but I want to make sure that these buttons do not fall off. Whether I choose to use these to top off some Christmas gifts or my Christmas tree as ornaments or even to include in my junk journals, I want to make sure that all of the embellishments are secure and that is the reason I like to use a very strong adhesive. And this Ultimate Glue is fantastic. This is another favorite tool of mine. It is called a Crystal Katana. It is a little picker up tool. It has a wax tip and then a pokey tool. Perfect for picking up small embellishments like sequins and buttons and even those little paper hearts. This works perfectly. I have used other pickup tools in the past. You can even use a crayon, which I demonstrated in a previous video, but it just makes it nice and easy to use this. I actually forgot that I had it and I had it uh, packed away for years, I maybe seven or eight years, but I'm going through my stash, I'm moving things around and just trying to use up the tools and the supplies that I have. Use what you have. So now I'm adding the little embellishments as buttons. So some are literally buttons and others I'm going to use some of these really pretty flat back pearls. And I kid you not when I tell you that this glue will keep your embellishments in place and I like that it dries clear as well. So, so beautiful. And now I'm going to add some of these really cute floral gem stickers from Close to My Heart. You know, every time I say Close to My Heart, it just, it's bittersweet because I really love the Close to My Heart um, product line. So it makes me really sad that they had to close. But I'm glad that I still have a lot of embellishments and product from Close to My Heart that I can use in my projects. So with the little pokey side of my crystal katana, I will attach the little stickers. And even though these already have adhesive on the back, I'm adding a little bit more glue just to really make sure that the embellishments adhere. 
And then this one I'm using three, they are a little bit smaller. You can add as many buttons as you want, two, three, four, five. You are going to build your snowman and have your snowman look however it is that you like. Have you ever built a snowman? It's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. I mean, like a real, like using real snow. <laughs> and now I'm going to add a little heart. So snowmen, they just melt my heart. And then snowmen with hearts, I mean, it, you, it can't get any better than that. It just literally melts my heart to see snowmen with hearts. So I thought I would just uh, join the two together. I'm taking some scrap red cardstock, actually not scrap, it, it was a brand new sheet of red cardstock that I've had in my stash and this beautiful heart punch stamp or punch that I've had from close to my heart for a long time. And I'm going to add some glue. I'm using some little tweezers to hold it and to add the glue. But first, let me open the bottle of glue. It's important that if you do use this glue that you close it or um, tighten it back up after each use or it just clogs and then you have to run it under warm water to clear it so if you have this just make sure you seal it tight after you're done using it and now adding the little hearts and you can position your heart wherever you want some I've actually done a little bit higher than others I like the longer heart better than the than the smaller hearts all the hearts are cute but for this project the longer hearts I like but I am going to use one of the the medium sized hearts on that last snowman I love all the hearts but some projects you know need a different heart <laughs> so cute and now I'm going to add the little eyes and for this super easy I am grabbing just a regular office hole punch some black cardstock and I am going to punch out several of these little holes to make my little eyes adding two little drops of glue on this first one I glued the eyes down kind of wide and you'll see right now I don't like the way that looks so I'm actually going to go back and fix the eyes I prefer the eyes to be kind of closed or excuse me closer together than wider apart <laughs> and you'll see I notice it when I add the second set of eyes to this snowman they're just so much cuter when they are closer together. Look at the cute little face. These right here, yeah, I didn't love it. So luckily the glue was still wet and I'm able to reposition the eyes. Had it dried, I would have still taken it apart <laughs> and corrected it. So adding all of the cute little eyes to the cute little snowman face. And now the next step, I am going to add an eyelet to the very top of the tag. And I'm going to punch out a hole with my crop -a dial And I'm going to set a gold eyelet in place. And this is what makes it the tag. If you decide that you are going to make some of these cute snowman tags, the eyelet is completely optional. Once you make your own little snowman tags, you can create them however it is that you like depending on what your supplies look like. Your supplies are obviously going to be different from my stash. So go through whatever it is that you have and create your own. If you don't have corrugated cardboard, you can use cereal box or you can even use just regular cardstock, packaging, whatever type of heavy material, heavy paper that you have, you can create these. But the corrugated cardboard makes it really makes them look super super cute adds more interest adds more dimension to it so now i am setting the gold colored eyelets in place with the crop -a dial it is the easiest way to attach eyelets 
back 20 years ago, I was using a little hammer and an eyelet setter. Remember that? <laughs> you had to pound them in place, shake the entire table to set your eyelets. So the crocodile makes it just so much easier. Okay, so now I'm going to add some trim to make it appear like a little scarf on the snowman. And I just went through my stash of ribbons and grabbed four different styles. And I'm just going to tie a double knot around the neck of the little snowman so it looks like a little scarf. I'm sure that when you watch this, your own ideas are brewing. I'm sure that this is inspiring you and your mind right now is full of so many other ideas and ways that you can create your own snowman. So now all you have to do is execute it. They are going to look so stinking cute. This ribbon I actually cut a little bit too short. Had I had my glue gun on, I would have just added a little bit of glue to keep that knot in place, but it was too short to do a double knot and I didn't have my hot glue gun ready because that would have quickly sealed that tie in place. So I'll go back and cut a longer piece of that trim to do a double tie on that ribbon. Cleaning up the extra long edges. That green ribbon looks so cute. And this one here, I used some glitter lace trim. I'll save this shorter piece for a different project. And here's the longer strand that I just cut. And with this, I'm now able to do a double knot. I will be making so many more of these because I plan on adding some to my Christmas tree and stick around because I'm going to show you what my Christmas tree looks like. It's not your traditional Christmas tree. It's a little bit different, but because I have a limited space, you're going to get a kick out of my tree. I'm just now starting to embellish it. So my Christmas tree is not done, but I want to show you what it looks like with these cute little snowmen hanging from it. But I will be making more because I am adding these to the Christmas journals that I am working on. So each, each journal will include one of these. I'm now grabbing some twine to add the tie and I'm just going to thread it through the eyelet. And this is old Stampin' Up! twine. I have had this for years. I don't think I've ever used it. This is the first time I've used this twine. Can you believe that? <laughs> I have no business going to craft stores and buying more supplies. I just have to shop my stash, you guys. So I need to go and just open drawers and boxes and just use the stuff that I have. And so doing a simple knot to tie the twine. Oh, I just love how each one of these turned out. So, so cute. Out of cardboard, true trash to treasure. It's my favorite thing to do. One of my subscribers from, um, her name is Christine. She is, I believe she's in France. And she called me the recycling queen recently. <laughs> so I thought that was sweet. And I'm showing you that the glitter is not coming off. Maybe a little bit, there will be a little bit of fallout. But for the most part, it's layered between the two layers of Mod Podge. So now let me show you how you can use it in your junk journals. I have a video showing you how I make the cover and how I save the golden spine to these little golden book junk journals. So these are the journals which will include one of my snowman corrugated tags. And I will simply attach it to one of the pages with a paper clip or somehow dangle it from the top. I'll figure it out when I get to that point. 
I may even just attach it to the heavier cardstock, which I like to use on the uh, fronts of the signatures. There are two signatures in these journals. And so the snowman is a little bit heavier and so it may do better on the cardstock. Another option is you can use these tags as toppers on your journals. So if you have a plain journal with no design and you need to add some type of decoration, you can take one of these and create a whole scene on the front cover as a topper. Or you can simply dangle it on your Christmas tree. Here is the door to my linen closet and this is my Christmas tree, you guys. I am so limited with space and so this is the only option I had for a Christmas tree. I've had this now for about three, four years and I hang it right here on this door every year. And look at how cute the little snowman tags look, along with my other heart ornaments and my snowman ornaments. But they look so stinking cute. When I get my Christmas tree done, I will show you a finished look. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are all awesome. I wish each and every one of you a beautiful holiday season. Thank you.